Hey there everyone. Welcome to our deep dive into a question that's on a lot of minds. What's new with COVID-19 symptoms in 2025? This virus has been a shapeshifter since day one, mutating and keeping us on our toes. Especially with some exciting updates we'll get into shortly. Knowing the latest symptoms isn't just about staying informed, it's about protecting yourself, your family, and your community from a bug that's still causing trouble worldwide. All right, let's start with a big update that's been making headlines as of late May 2025. The emergence of the FLIRT variants, specifically KP.2 and KP.3. These are the newest kids on the block, descendants of the Omicron lineage, and they've been popping up across the globe since early this year. Named for specific mutations in their spike protein, F and L for certain amino acid changes, and IRT for additional tweaks, these variants are more contagious than some of their predecessors. Right now, as of 9.30 p.m. on May 25, 2025, here in Southeast Asia and beyond, they're driving a noticeable uptick in cases, especially in the U.S., Japan, Korea, and parts of Southeast Asia like Vietnam. Experts say their spike protein mutations, like those seen in the F456L and R346T spots, help them latch onto cells more effectively, making them spread faster in crowded places. While they don't seem to cause more severe disease, their ability to dodge some immunity from past infections or vaccines is raising eyebrows. We'll dive into what this means for symptoms next. What's fascinating about KP.2 and KP.3 is how they've evolved. They're part of a monitoring list by the WHO as variants under monitoring, meaning scientists are keeping a close eye on them. Data from the past few months shows they've outpaced some older variants in transmission, especially in urban areas where people are packed together. Plus, the fall 2024 vaccines, updated for the JN.1 lineage, offer some cross-protection, but these FLIRT variants might still sneak past in some cases. So, staying vigilant with testing and prevention is more important than ever as we head into the summer of 2025. All right. Let's kick things off with the classics. You know the drill. Fever, dry cough, bone deep fatigue, and shortness of breath. These are the OG symptoms we've been dealing with since 2020. And guess what? They're still the heavy hitters in 2025, even with the new flirt variants KP.2 and KP.3 spreading fast. Fever might feel like you're burning up, while that cough can be relentless, like a tickle in your throat that just won't quit. Fatigue? It's like your body's battery is stuck at 5%, and shortness of breath can make even a short walk feel like a marathon. These symptoms are like the virus's calling card. They're often the first sign something's wrong, whether it's the flirt variants or an older strain. But don't get too comfortable just because they're familiar. They can range from mild, like a slight fever you barely notice, to severe, where you're struggling to catch your breath. If you feel any of these, it's like a red flag waving in your face. Time to take action. Now here's where things get wild. COVID-19 in 2025 has thrown some curveballs with new symptoms that might catch you off guard. Symptoms we're seeing with the flirt variants too. We're talking intense headaches that feel like a construction crew is jackhammering in your skull, trouble focusing that makes reading an email feel like solving a calculus problem and weird vision issues like blurriness or a strange tingling sensation when you try to focus on something. Imagine trying to watch your favorite show, but everything looks like it's underwater. These new symptoms are sneaky because they mimic everyday issues, whether you've got KP.2, KP.3, or another strain. That headache? You might blame it on a long day at work. Trouble focusing? Maybe too much screen time or not enough coffee. Vision problems? Could be you need new glasses, right? Wrong. These could be COVID knocking at your door, so don't shrug them off as no big deal. Another new player in 2025 is skin changes, which we're seeing with the flirt variants too. Some folks are noticing rashes, red patches, or even discoloration on their hands, feet, or other areas. It's like the virus is painting a warning sign right on your skin. These can look like anything from a mild sunburn to strange splotchy patterns that make you do a double take. And get this, 
Some people with flirt variants are reporting a burning or itching sensation with these rashes, almost like an allergic reaction. It's not just cosmetic, it can be uncomfortable and a clue that COVID's involved. If your skin's acting weird, it's worth checking out. But hold up, COVID-19 isn't just attacking your body, it's messing with your head too. In 2025, we're hearing more about psychological symptoms like anxiety that keeps you up at night, depression that feels like a heavy cloud you can't shake, and insomnia that leaves you staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m. These aren't just feeling down moments. They can be intense and linked to the virus, including the new flirt variants. These mental health symptoms are tricky because they're not as visible as a cough or fever, whether it's KP.2, KP.3, or another strain. You might feel irritable, overwhelmed, or just off without realizing it's COVID-related. For example, you could be snapping at your kids or struggling to enjoy things you usually love, like binge-watching a new series. That's when you need to pause and consider testing. Another mental curveball? Brain fog. It's like your brain's stuck in first gear, making it hard to think clearly or remember simple things. You might forget where you parked your car or struggle to finish a sentence. It's frustrating, and for some with the flirty variants, it feels like wading through mental molasses. Okay, here's another surprise. COVID-19 is hitting the digestive system in 2025, and the FLIRT variants are no exception. Some people are dealing with nausea that makes you feel like you just stepped off a roller coaster vomiting that comes out of nowhere, or diarrhea that keeps you running to the bathroom. What's tough about these digestive symptoms is they can mimic other issues like food poisoning, a stomach bug, or even stress-related IBS, whether it's KP.2, KP.3, or another strain. You might think, oh, I just ate some bad sushi, but it could be COVID. That's why getting tested is crucial. It's like solving a mystery with your health as the prize. For some, these digestive issues come with abdominal pain or cramps, like your stomach's throwing a tantrum. It's not just uncomfortable. It can disrupt your day and make you feel miserable. If your gut's acting up alongside other symptoms, don't ignore it, especially with FLIRT variants circulating. Now let's get serious for a sec. Long COVID is still a big deal in 2025, even with the flirt variants. Even after the virus is gone, some people are left with lingering symptoms, like chronic fatigue that makes getting out of bed feel like running a marathon, or joint pain that turns every movement into a chore. It's like the virus leaves behind a shadow that just won't fade. Long COVID can also bring back those mental health struggles we talked about, like anxiety that feels like a constant knot in your chest, or depression that dims your world. For some, it's like fighting a battle on two fronts, physical and mental and it can last weeks or even months, even with the new flirt variants. Here's what makes long COVID so tricky. It doesn't discriminate. You could have a mild case of COVID, barely a sniffle, and still end up with these lingering effects, whether it's KP.2, KP.3, or another strain. It's like the virus plays a long game and you don't know you're in it until months later. So who's most likely to deal with these new symptoms and the flirt variants? Well, COVID doesn't play favorites, but it hits some groups harder. Older adults, think 65 and up, are at higher risk, especially if they've got underlying conditions like diabetes, heart disease, or lung issues. These conditions are like an open door for the virus to cause more chaos, especially with KP.2 and KP.3's ability to spread faster. Kids aren't immune either. In 2025, we're seeing more cases of children with milder symptoms like rashes, low-grade fevers, or fatigue that parents might mistake for just being tired from school. But these could be COVID clues, especially with flirt variants like KP.2 and KP.3 circulating widely. So keep an eye out, parents. And don't think vaccines are a total shield. Vaccinated folks can still get breakthrough infections with flirt variants, though their symptoms are usually less severe, like a bad cold instead of a hospital stay. Vaccines are like a seatbelt. They don't prevent every crash, but they make it way less likely you'll get seriously hurt. Still, 
KP.2 and KP.3 have mutations that might make them a bit better at dodging vaccine protection. With all these symptoms, old, new, physical, mental, testing is your MVP, especially with flirt variants spreading. Feeling off? Grab a rapid test from your local pharmacy or swing by a clinic for a PCR test. It's like having a superpower to detect the virus before it spreads or gets worse. Timing is everything. The sooner you test, the sooner you can stop the virus from spreading to your coworkers, friends, or grandma. Especially since flirt variants like KP.2 and KP.3 are more contagious. Plus, early detection means you can start treatment before things spiral out of control. If you do test positive, don't panic. Call your doctor. There are antiviral meds, like Paxlovid, that can knock the virus down if you start them early. Think of it like calling in the cavalry before the battle gets too intense, whether you've got KP.2, KP.3, or another strain. All right, let's talk about staying ahead of the game with prevention, crucial now with FLIRT variants on the rise. The classics still rule. Wear a mask in crowded spots like buses or concerts. Wash your hands like you're trying to scrub off glitter after a craft project and keep your distance when possible, like giving people a friendly six-foot bubble. Ventilation is a secret weapon, especially with how contagious KP.2 and KP.3 are. Crack open a window at home or work, or invest in an air purifier. It's like giving the virus an eviction notice before it can settle in. Studies show good airflow can cut transmission risk big time. Don't sleep on booster shots either. Getting the latest vaccine updates is like upgrading your phone's software. It keeps your defenses sharp against new variants like KP.2 and KP.3. The good news? The fall 2024 vaccines were updated for the JN.1 lineage, which is close enough to FLIRT variants to offer some protection. Check with your doctor to see if you're due for a boost. This fight isn't just about you. It's about all of us, especially with flirty variants spreading fast. If you're feeling sick, do the right thing and stay home. You don't want to be the one passing COVID to your neighbor, coworker, or someone who's more vulnerable, like an elderly relative or a friend with asthma. Spread knowledge, not the virus. Talk to your friends, family, or coworkers about these symptoms, the flirt variants, and prevention tips. Post this video on social media or text it to your group chat. Accurate info is like a vaccine for misinformation. You can also step up by supporting local health efforts, donate to community clinics, volunteer at a vaccination drive, or even help distribute masks. It's like being a superhero for your neighborhood. No cape required, especially when flirt variants are spreading in places like the US, Japan, Korea, and parts of Southeast Asia, including Vietnam. We've been through a lot since 2020, and we're tougher for it. But staying proactive, testing, preventing, and looking out for each other is how we keep COVID in check, especially with flirt variants like KP.2 and KP.3 still out there. So let's do this together. Share this video, stay safe, and we'll catch you next time. While integrating the information about flirty variants, I've ensured the script doesn't overhype their severity, as there's no evidence they cause more severe disease than prior strains, aligning with a balanced perspective rather than an alarmist narrative.